I am not. Yeah, I am uh, Sadananda, again uh, principal of uh, the theological college here. I very much appreciate your knowledge in both the scriptures, and uh, I would uh, request our Christians as well as Muslim brothers and sisters to go deeper, still deeper into the subject, not just quoting from the scriptures. Uh, it may sound very, you see, wonderful, but at the same time, study a text, go deeper into that and have some dialogue, not arguing my point, you see, I mean, uh, not, not only that, perhaps it may help us. Um, regarding, of course, the divinity of Jesus, there are other, you see, quotations also from the Bible. Uh, sometimes we, you see, when it supports our point, we may say that it is an, it's a later interpretation. For example, what, what do you think about the prologue in John's Gospel? For example, the word became flesh, word became a human being, uh, where, we, where we have the concept of, uh, you see, incarnation of Jesus. The word was God, the Logos, concept of Logos. And I'm just, uh, you see, just to uh, ask you to enlighten these things. The brother asked, I'm giving another quotation, and he rightly agrees. But only quoting is not important. Going to depth is important. Only quoting and my father and one is not important. Seeing the context is important so that I come to know whether Jesus actually claimed divinity. And the brother has given one more quotation. That one more place, there are various places. Brother gave three quotations. I gave the context and it was clear. Brother gave one more very good quotation from the Bible. He's quoting Gospel of John. The reference is verse number one. Chapter number one, verse number one. Gospel of John. The word was God. Uh, that's right. So you said both things. In the beginning was the word. Word was God. So you gave two quotations. Word became flesh and word was God. Both you gave. So I'm going from verse number one, then coming to verse number twelve. But first comes verse number one, then comes verse number twelve. And I do agree that Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one, I'm quoting. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. It's a very good quotation. If you read from the Bible, if you don't understand, you should go in-depth as the brothers, I do agree with you. The in-depth, the original manuscript is which brother? Greek, New Testament. Though Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, spoke Hebrew. But the original manuscript are in Greek, not written by Jesus, peace be upon himself. It's in Greek. If you go to the Greek, you'll understand, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The first time the God appears, if you say that the Word was God, just as a layman, that Word was God, that means... Word is God. So now wherever word comes, you exchange it with God. In the beginning was word becomes, in the beginning was God. Right? In the word was with God becomes, the God was with God. It doesn't make sense. God was with God. In the beginning was word becomes, in the beginning was God. God was with God, and God was God. It doesn't make sense. So if I agree that word here means actually God, and if we exchange the word and put, instead of the place of word, put the word God there, it will read, in the beginning was God. God was with God and God was God. Does it make sense? No. So how you go, if it's difficult to understand, go in depth as the brother said. If you read in the original, Greek, the word used first time, in the beginning was word. And the word was with God. Word was with God. The first God used is Hothios. Hothios. Meaning the God with capital G. Hothios. The second time, and the word was God, is Tontheos. Tontheos, if you ask any Greek scholar, Tontheos means a God, with a small g. Small g, meaning a godly person. First is Hothios, second is Tontheos. So if you read, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God Almighty, capital G. And the word was God, small g. But if you read in the Bible, both the places there's capital G. Who's, who's done the mistake? The Almighty God. The translators. First word in Greek is Hothios. Second word is Tontheos. So why the capital G on both the places? Who are you trying to deceive? I'm sorry to use these words, but this is, if you go to the original manuscript, brother, the first word is Hothios, second word is Tontheos. So it says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, Almighty God. And the word was God, Mr. Messenger, we agree. Quran says that Jesus was a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every messenger was a word from God. We have got no objection at all. So if you analyze, I have got no objection, Jesus was a God with a small g. And further, if you read in the Old Testament, it says, if you read, that Moses was sent as a God to the Pharaoh. God, do you mean that he was claiming divinity? 
He was sent as a God and as a messenger. But the original manuscripts out there, what they translate is correctly as a God. So if you read the context, you'll understand better that if that verse, if I agree, it's correct. It says that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a God, which is also mentioned in the Quran. That Jesus, peace be upon him, was a God. And what became flesh? Yes, the messenger came out here as flesh, which the messenger in flesh and blood. And Jesus, peace be upon him, says very clearly, if you go in the Gospel of Luke, when he goes to the upper room, and he goes to the upper room, chapter 24, verse number 36, where he says, Shalom Alaikum, peace be on you, in Hebrew, Shalom Alaikum. There he says, and the people were shocked, that they thought that Jesus Christ was crucified, and they believed not for joy. He said that, handle me and see. Handle my hand and feet and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bones like I have. That means he has flesh, I agree. Handle my hand and feet and check a spirit has no flesh and bone, indicating that he was not a spirit. He was flesh. He was not crucified. He was alive. And he said, do you have any to eat? And they gave him honeycomb and he ate. To prove what? That he was not God. He wasn't crucified. He is yet alive. So I agree with you, brother. If you read the context and if there is a confusion, difference of opinion, go to the original text. And the original text will come to know what is the truth. How the answer the question, brother? Because at the same uh, context, the Thomas says, whom you quote, you see, I mean, my Lord and my God. You see, I mean, we can, we can go on discussing about these things. Uh, I have studied both Hebrew and Greek in depth. I am asking from that context also. I mean, I am just uh, giving you. Brother has given another quotation. See, brother, you can give hundred quotations. What my point is, the first quotation you give, do you agree to right or wrong? See, brother gives three quotations, I give answers to all three. You give two quotations, I give the reply. Are you satisfied? You know Greek, brother. Do you agree that the first time the word God is used is Hothios? Do you agree? If you know Greek. What is the meaning of Hothios in Greek? See, people don't know Greek. Hothios means? I am right now, okay. So, so at least let, let the people know that Brother Zakir is not pulling a fast one. Agree, then go to next quotation. See, there are thousands of verses in the Bible. We can discuss each and every. But before going to the new one, at least agree what Brother Zakir said in the first verse, whether you agree or not. If you don't agree, I don't agree with Brother Zakir, but Hotel does not mean God. He's telling wrong, I know Greek. Tell me and I'll change my statement. Just by going to a new quotation, I will give the explanation for that also, brother. But first, before going to a new quotation, as you said, let there be a dialogue. We have not come here to fight. If I'm wrong, I'll change. We have not come here to discuss. Quran says, Ta'ala wila kalmatin sawa'in. Bainana bainakum. That come to common terms as I have you. If I am wrong, I will change. If you are wrong, you should change. We should come on a common platform. As the Qari recited in the first, in the beginning of the talk, in Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 82, that the strongest in enemy to the Muslims, to the believers, are those who are pagans, idol worshippers and Jews. But the nearest are those people who say we are Christians. We love you, brothers. But if there's a difference of opinion, you come and you discuss the problem. Brother made another statement, another quotation. The first two I give the clarification, and I do agree with him. I said, my God, my God, it is, and I do agree. If you, my God, my Lord, if you read the statement, like for example, if the person comes and tells me, like, Brother Zakir, he gave, you are late, you have to end the program. Oh my God! It's 12 o'clock, does it mean I'm calling him God? If you read the context, it's important. Read the context. Because again, Jesus Christ people say, don't call me good. He said, don't call me good. Where the question of calling me God comes? So if someone calls him, my God, he didn't agree. He didn't say, okay, yes, I'm God. If I tell him, my God, it is late. That doesn't mean I'm calling him God. He understands that I'm praising, oh my God, it's so late. So when I say, my God, it's not referring to Jesus Christ, please be upon him. You are my God. He didn't say that. And when I made the statement, Jesus himself did not make any unequal statement. This is a statement of Thomas. Yet it doesn't fulfill the criteria challenge which I put forward. My challenge was, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus, peace be upon himself, says that he is God or where he says, worship me. The brother three statements he gave all were of Jesus. And my father, one is of Jesus. He that has seen me has seen my father. No man comes to my father but by me. It's from Jesus, 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 peace be upon him. But your statement is of Thomas. Yet I gave you the context, which is not of Jesus, peace be upon him. It is just an exclamation. Hope that answers the question.